Hello, you fire net folks. We're here in sunny Las Vegas at CES 2025, where NVIDIA has announced a whole host of new products that go from both the server side and the consumer side with even some workstation stuff thrown in there. So let's get started with the server side. On the server side, um, a few years, uh, more than a few years ago at this point, NVIDIA bought Mellanox, which was known for its InfiniBand networking and all the ecosystem that goes around that. And NVIDIA has just introduced the newest member of that ecosystem, the Connect X8 Super NIC. This NIC is capable of 800 gigabits per second of InfiniBand networking through a single port. So for you guys in the industry, that's 800 G line rate. Um, and this card, it's very impressive in terms of the amount of data it can push. There is a, a bit of a caveat here that the ethernet side can only go up to 400 G line rate. So that's 400 gigabits per second per port. However, you can have two ports of ethernet networking here. So that means that the, no matter if you're using InfiniBand or ethernet, your total maximum bandwidth over the network is 800 gigabits per second. And in gigabyte terms, that's hundred gigabytes per second out to the network, um, which is almost as much as the laptop in front of me has memory bandwidth, just, for some context. Um, so in order to feed that bandwidth, this card actually has a very unique PCIe setup. Um, one, it's PCIe Gen 6, which is new, uh, very new, and there's not even CPUs that support that yet. And it has up to 48 lanes of PCIe net attachment. How exactly that's working, I'm not positive. In prior generations, uh, Mellanox and the Connect X series have had basically breakout X16 cards where you, you plug in the main neck and then you plug in a secondary, essentially a mezzanine card into the system. And maybe there's two of them, However, it's also possible that they're that they have 32 lanes of PCIe 6 on the standard PCIe connector. Um, how exactly this is working, I'm I'm not positive, but I am interested to see um, and ask some questions about how exactly this system works. Now. Sorry, need some refreshment. Um, moving on to the graphics side of things. 5090. Big boy. This is honestly an insane card for a consumer class GPU. 21,760 CUDA cores. 1.8 terabytes of memory bandwidth through a 512-bit, 32 gigabyte GDDR7 bus, boosting up to 2.41 gigahertz, three encoders, two decoders. This thing is honestly a monster. Um, and with that monster capability does come a pretty spicy 575 watt TDP. However, interestingly enough, for the Founders Edition, you aren't actually sacrificing size. Surprisingly enough, it's a two-slot GPU, um, and it's only uh, just over 300 millimeters long. So it's pretty compact for what for trying to cool 575 watts. And I know that the 4090 in games most of the time didn't really pull 450 watts. Um, now in compute tasks, yeah, it would. And I suspect that this 
575 watt TDP really is for compute workloads. And the price of this card, yes, it's $2,000, but for what you're getting, honestly, I don't find it that unreasonable. Um, it's, it could, honestly, this card is a card that NVIDIA could have priced at anything. It, they could have priced at $3,000 and because it's just number one, I think people would have still bought it. Moving down the stack to the 5080, the 5080 is basically take the 5090 and cut it in half. Uh, the CUDA cores are, are nearly, are basically half. The memory bandwidth is basically half. Um, one keynote, the encoders, uh, there are two encoders and two decoders versus the three and two on the 5090. Um, yeah, it really is just half of a 5090. Um, this is 360 watts, um, and it's a thousand dollars again, half of the 2k that the 5090 is. Moving to the 5070 Ti, and what's interesting here is that it's a very small difference, at least in CUDA core count, it's eight almost 9,000 CUDA cores versus the just, oh, uh, just over 10,500 10, that the 5080 has. Um, however, the memory bandwidth is the same, um, or it, at least it appears to be the same. Same 256-bit bus, uh, same 16 gigs of GDDR7. However, uh, again, a note, this only has one encoder and two, excuse me, two encoders and one decoder. Um, and for this uh, decrease of a fairly light change, um, it's now 300 watts instead of 360 for the 5080. Um, interestingly enough, there's no Founders Edition card here. So, if you want a Founders Edition, you have to get either the 5090, 4, 5080, or the 5070. Now, the 5070, again, is a quite, a quite significant cut from the um, 5070 Ti, um, 6144 CUDA cores, um, 2. 5.1 gigahertz, 12 gigs of GDDR7, so that's a 128, 192 bit bus, and one encoder and one decoder. Um, this is 250 watts, and a, yeah, this is more, this really feels like a sort of an ITX sweet spot to me. Feels very good for a, an ITX build. Um, now, moving on to the sort of the last really big news part, and this is what I'm personally super excited for. This is what's called what NVIDIA is calling Project Digits. This is using the GB10 Super Chip, which is brand new, um, and this is a collaboration between NVIDIA and MediaTek. MediaTek, the CPU portion done by MediaTek has 20 CPU cores. However, unlike other MediaTek products, this is not a phone SOC, not by any means. There are 20 cores here, 10 ARM Cortex-X925s and 10 ARM Cortex A725s. And this is attached to a Blackwell GPU that is capable of up to one petaflops of AI compute, FP4 AI compute that is specified in here. Um, and that is all fed by a 512 bit LPDDR5 X bus um, that has 128 gigabytes of RAM on it at least in the project digits form factor, which is just a tiny little nook, even smaller than a nook sized device. And 
yeah, I'm really excited about this thing. Um, it, especially on the memory bandwidth side, if this is using uh, 8,000 uh, LPDDR5X 8000, then that's 512 gigabytes of memory bandwidth. That's really nice. And in the Project Digits form factor, the GB10 super chip is attached to a ConnectX NIC and a four terabyte SSD. I This whole package, even though it is $3,000, it's really interesting as like a super compact but super powerful uh, little desktop um, dev kit for if you need to develop for a, a much bigger system like a GB200. So plenty of announcements from NVIDIA here at CES. We didn't even get to cover DLSS 4 and, and any of that, but I think I've rambled on enough. If you like this video, uh, hit like, hit subscribe, comment, say I'm being a brambly or whatever you want, and appease the YouTube algorithm god. Anyway, have a good one, folks.